Hello. So, we completed our discussion on the finite elements in one dimension and we saw two uh, application areas, uh, one dealing with uh, a second order differential equation in uh, one dimensional domain and another one uh, uh, dealing with uh, the beam bending problem which is defined by fourth order differential equations uh, in uh, linear domain. Uh, we saw two different types of, I mean that uh, these two examples provided us the basic uh, vehicle through which to explore, which allowed us to explore two different classes of finite element approximation finite elements uh, with a different uh, degree of continuity requirement or smoothness uh, across the inter element boundaries C0 continuity and uh, C1 continuity elements. Now, we extend our discussion to uh, more general uh, uh, problems of uh, interest that is two and three dimensional elasticity problems. And uh, uh, as uh, all problems are essentially three dimensional and uh, continuum modeling allows us to model all the problems uh, using basic different uh, governing differential equations of motion for in three dimensional continuum. And uh, with some uh, simplifying assumptions, uh, the dimension can be brought down and uh, we can uh, it, uh, it reasonably good approximation can be obtained by using a two dimensional idealization by uh, some simplifying assumption in the third direction about uh, the behavior either because of the loading condition or the uh, deformation condition and so on. So, we will see that, but uh, that is the only approximation uh, that is the only difference Otherwise, conceptual uh, uh, point of view, uh, there is re really no difference between finite elements of two dimensions or three dimensions, except that one dimension is uh, um, extra in case of three dimensional uh, elements. So, the beginning of the uh, discussion, of course, starts with the governing differential equation and uh, this is the uh, stress block, familiar stress block that uh, all of us are familiar with. Uh, a small cube, uh, uh, cuboid of dimension uh, dx, dy, dz, infinite decimal cuboid. And uh, these are the stress uh, components which are marked on the, uh, each of the six faces. And on the positive faces, we have also marked the uh, <coughs> names of the stress components. So, sigma xx, sigma yy and sigma zz, they are the normal stresses along uh, respective directions and tau xy, tau yz and tau zx, these are the uh, shear stresses. And of course, uh, by there are complementary shears and uh, uh, if we go by the equilibrium, moment equilibrium, established moment equilibrium of the forces. Uh, acting on this infinitesimal block, we can uh, uh, come to this uh, standard result that uh, complementary shears are of course equal. That is uh, tau zx is equal to tau xz on this uh, xz plane and tau yx is in fact equal to tau xy. And similarly for uh, yz, tau yz and tau zy. So, governing differential equations is essentially uh, a force equilibrium for, uh, on a body of uh, infinitesimal volume uh, enclosed by dx, dy, dz and uh, the governing differential equations are uh, again uh, defined by uh, these are force equilibrium. So, uh, partial derivative uh, del sigma xx by del x plus del tau x y tau y x by del y plus del z x uh, tau z x by d z del z plus f x. f x is the body force uh, component uh, along x direction and this is equal to the rate of change of momentum along x. So, u is the displacement along uh, x uh, direction, v is the displacement of the body along y direction and z 
W is the displacement along z direction and del 2 u by d t square is the acceleration or rate of change of momentum. I mean rho is of course the density and for unit volume um, dz, dx, dy, dz and uh, rho dx, dy, dz will be the uh, mass of this infinitesimal volume and multiplied by the acceleration. So, that is the rate of change of momentum cons assuming that mass of the system, mass of the body is invariant. So, that is the basic governing differential equation and the classical uh, methods of solution uh, uh, in uh, theory of elasticity of course involve use of uh, uh, strain displacement equation, I mean this equilibrium equation and then there are uh, uh, strain displacement equation, stress strain relationships and then of course, there are uh, compatibility equations because uh, these are not enough, there are not, not enough uh, uh, constraints to ensure uh, unique valued deformation solution. And solution of those is of course, very tedious and a simpler approach is often used by using making use of Aries stress function and uh, trying to find solution of this governing uh, basic elasticity problem. Now, that is of course, uh, very much involved and uh, possible uh, is uh, it is of uh, feasible only for very simple cases with simple geometries, regular geometries and uh, uh, simple loading cases. So, we will explore how we can use finite element method and how simple the entire solution process becomes when we use finite element method, when we apply finite element method to this problem. To begin uh, with the our discussion uh, to uh, take our discussion towards finite element uh, uh, formulation. Uh, let us uh, have a look at how the stresses are related to the stresses mentioned in this governing differential equation. Of, of course, they have to be, re, uh, they are related to the deformations that are uh, produced in the body. So, how those, uh, these stresses are related to the deformations and we make use of uh, generalized Hooke's law that is stress is proportional to strain and uh, uh, that is defined by sigma that is the uh, tensor, stress tensor and that is given by uh, uh, related to proportional to the strain tensor epsilon and D is the constitutive matrix, matrix of constitutive relations properties. So, uh, elastic constants like uh, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio or Lamy's constants they can be related to that. Epsilon 0 is the initial strain. For example, I mean these are uh, uh, the uh, these arise because of uh, maybe uh, one common example is the temperature difference. So, co thermal expansion strains because of thermal expansion. So, those strains are not related to thermal expansion, those are not uh, originating because of the uh, forces and the loads imposed on the body. So, total strain in the body. Uh, this uh, initial strain has to be removed uh, for considering the stresses because of the loads and uh, sigma 0 is of course, the initial stress similar to initial strain. I mean, uh, the body may be pre-stress, I mean uh, already having some kind of stress in the body. So, those have to be added into the uh, uh, in addition to the stresses because of the deformations. Now, Another, uh, this is of course, uh, a very uh, a general form of uh, stress strain relationship and uh, uh, sigma 0 and epsilon 0, they are uh, uh, known quantities uh, before the problem is uh, handled and they can be straight away incorporated in our formulation without uh, much ado. So, we will drop these two uh, initial uh, values in the from the discussion and assume that we, we are not uh, dealing with initial strains and initial stresses just to keep our discussion simple. But you will see that it is not really uh, much of an uh, issue incorporating them in the formulation except adding two more terms in our working. So, and further we also assume for simplicity 
the that the material is homogeneous and isotropic. So, the continuum the medium elastic medium that we are dealing with is homogeneous that means the same elastic properties apply throughout the domain. So, at all points in the domain it, it, we are looking at a volume volumetric domain three dimensional body. So, at all points in the domain we have the same elastic properties. So, whether it is x 1 y 1 z 1 point or x 2 y 2 z 2 point or x 3 y 3 z 3 uh, point any point within the domain uh, same elastic properties uh, hold. Now, the elastic properties can be different in different directions for some cases. For example, if a very common example a very peculiar example is the uh, uh, timber or some composites. So, they have different uh, properties different elastic properties in uh, different directions or uh, more uh, importantly in orthogonal directions. So, those are called orthotropic uh, materials where the elastic properties they may be homogeneous at every point they are same, but in orthogonal directions the properties may be different. So, those are orthotropic, but in general case for any orientation for different orientation we have we might have different properties in uh, uh, by changing the direction. So, those are in general referred to as anisotropic uh, material and uh, that is of course, uh, very uh, as general as it can get, but to keep uh, our discussion simple and for the macro level when we look at the broad picture the properties material properties do not really change with change in direction unless the material is spatially engineered and the fibers are oriented in a preferential way uh, unless that happens if that happens then it may be different in orthogonal directions, but in general random uh, 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 random crystallization and random uh, randomly oriented uh, uh, grains. So, the properties at a big picture macroscopic level they are uh, more or less identical uh, in whichever direction we look at. So, that we call as isotropic condition. So, in all uh, uh, frame directions the elastic properties do not change. So, considering so, this is the our uh, basic framework we are looking at uh, homogeneous and isotropic elastic continuum and we are neglecting initial stresses and initial strain. And since uh, two dimensional uh, second order tensor stress tensor there will be nine elements in all uh, three diagonal they, they will be the principal stresses sigma x x sigma y y sigma z z and then there will be uh, six off diagonal terms. So, shear uh, stresses now we just uh, uh, mentioned discussed a little while back these uh, off diagonal terms they are of course, uh, uh, equal. So, the uh, stress tensor is symmetric. So, uh, tau x y is equal to tau y x. So, we can actually combine them into a simple uh, reduced instead of considering 9 elements of stress tensor we can only consider there are only 6 unique components and we can write them as a arrange it in a simple vector. And similarly we can also have similar kind of uh, arrangement for strains. So, 3 principal strains direct strains not principal strains uh, direct strains and 3 shear strains corresponding to the shear stresses. So, these 6 stresses are related to 6 independent strains through a matrix comprising of elastic uh, co constants elastic coefficients and this matrix is known as constitutive relation matrix denoted by D. So, in essence what we are looking at is sigma is equal to D times epsilon. So, sigma is proportional to uh, the strain stress is proportional to strain and D is the constant matrix of proportionality. And E here is the Young's modulus nu 
denotes the Parsons ratio and G is uh, of course the shear modulus which can be related to Young's modulus and Parsons ratio. So, that defines the stress strain relationship and uh, if we want we can uh, substitute for stresses in this governing differential equation and we will have the governing differential equation in terms of strains and elastic constants. So, still uh, not very useful form as of now. So, now how are the strains related to deformations? Because primary uh, motion is of course, the displacement. Uh, displacement along x, displacement along y, displacement along z, three orthogonal direction. So, the strains, direct strains and shear strains, they are related to the deformations along Cartesian coordinates and though are, they are related through a differential operator. So, you can uh, see here epsilon x x is equal to del u by del x, that is the standard definition of a direct strain along x, epsilon x x is equal to rate of change of deformation with respect to x and uh, epsilon y y direct uh, strain along y direction. So, that is rate of change of uh, v the deformation along uh, y direction with respect to coordinate uh, direction uh, dimension uh, y. And similarly for epsilon z z direct strain along z direction is rate of change of w with respect to z. So, these are the uh, three direct strains related to deformation components respect to deformation components. Then we come to the shear strains and we define I mean this is actually uh, the individual what we are referring to here gamma x y is total sum of I mean shear deformation would be uh, distortion from two sides. So, it is addition of the two. So, del u by del y plus del v by del x. So, that is the distortion in x y plane shear distortion. Then gamma y z is equal to del v by del z plus del w by del y. So, that is the distortion in the uh, y z plane and then gamma z x. So, the distortion along in the z x plane is uh, del u by del z and plus del w by del x. Now, this can be uh, encapsulated in the operator notation that we had seen earlier in our discussion in one dimensional uh, problems. So, the epsilon is given as a differential operator times u. So, u is the total vector that uh, uh, u v w. So, these three vectors we are representing these three components we are representing as a single vector notation u. And this L is the differential operator which operates on this uh, uh, dis displacement components to provide us the strain components respective strain components. So, this is the uh, strain displacement relationship. So, earlier, uh, so we started with uh, governing differential equation, uh, governing differential equation of motion in terms of stresses. Now, uh, after we defined the strain displacement uh, 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 stress strain relationship, we can formulate the governing differential equation or recast the differential equation in terms of strains. We just have to substitute for respective components of strains with uh, stresses with the uh, relationship with these uh, strain components. Now, strains are in turn related to the deformation and the strains can be substituted, the displacement uh, relationship uh, for strain can be substituted in the, into that differential equation. Now, if you look at it very closely, the uh, differential equation for uh, the governing differential equation can also be uh, written in the form of an operator equation. So, you can see the operators here, what are the operators? 
uh, first derivative with respect to x, uh, with respect to y, with respect to z and they operate on different components. And so, it is only a merely a similar operator. So, if you look at the arrangement of these dif differentials, you will find that this operator is going to be exactly similar. If I write in this in terms of uh, uh, some operator times the uh, vector of uh, stresses, then the operator that I will need is exactly same as the operator here uh, transpose of that, because I will have 6 uh, uh, stress components and there are 3 equations. So, this L operator is of course, 6 by 3 uh, size. So, I will have uh, transpose of that and that would be 3 by 6. Uh, operator size. So, let us look at this. So, the governing differential equation I can write as write this. So, we will see uh, if we rearrange this equation, then uh, we can uh, uh, expand this L transpose the differential operator that we have here L transpose and multiply it with the stress components that we have and uh, that will lead us to the basic uh, uh, same equations as uh, this. So, so let me just say L is equal to del over del x 0 0 0 del over del y 0 0 del over del z and then we have gamma x y. So, that would be del over del y and del over del x 0. Then we have gamma y z. So, that would be del over del z del over del y and then we have z x. So, del over del z del x. So, this is the uh, basic differential operator and the stress component is of course, uh, sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma z z, tau x y, tau y z and tau z x. So, if I pre multiply operate uh, L transpose the differential equation operator L transpose sigma. So, the first equation that will you will find. So, L is 6 by 3 dimension, this is 6 by 1. So, L transpose is going to be 3 by 6 and 6 by 1. So, this is going to be 3 by 1. So, these are the 3 equations of uh, motion, three, 3 different equations in orthogonal directions. So, let us look at the first equation, first row. So, first column becomes the first row. So, this becomes a del sigma x x by del x and then this 0 multiply with this and del plus del tau x y by del y plus del tau z x by del z. So, this is the uh, differential equation uh, first row and these are you will find this is exactly identical with the governing differential equation that we started with plus f x is equal to rho u double dot. And similarly, by operating on different uh, second uh, row and third row, we will obtain other rows of the governing differential equation. So, the point is uh, that whatever differential operator we have uh, which relates deformations to strain transpose of that operator is what uh, is uh, applicable for deriving the governing differential equation, uh, equation of motion in terms of stress components. So, L transpose sigma plus f is equal to rho u double dot. So, that is the governing differential equation and if I Six sigma, we already discussed that it will be proportional to strain and strain is proportional to uh, deformation. So, 
sigma is equal to uh, d epsilon and epsilon is equal to l u. So, substituting that uh, sigma is equal to d times l times l operating on u. So, this is what the governing differential equation becomes in terms of deformation components. So, l transpose d l u plus f is equal to rho u double dot in omega that is the uh, domain of the problem. So, that is the governing differential equation once we uh, substitute uh, deformation I mean uh, uh, make use of stress strain relationship and strain displacement relationship and substitute in the governing differential equation we will get the governing differential equation in terms of uh, deformation. Now, what to do with these deformations? How does this help us in formulating finite element equation? We will uh, discuss that in our next class, next lecture. Thank you.